In Edmonton, Canada, you're on the air with Jim and Matt. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, so I was wondering, uh, I used to be an atheist. Uh, now I'm a Catholic. Um, I'm sorry. And, uh, you're the anti-Jim. <laughs> well, yes. You, you're midge. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, we all come back eventually. No, no, we all don't. I don't know that, and you can't demonstrate that. <laughs> anyway, it, it says you're, you're, you're basically asking what's the point of being alive if you're an atheist? Yeah, so um, one of the things I struggled with when I was an atheist was um, what's the point of being alive, right? Like if I know that life is ultimately going to be a series of trials and sufferings and some good experiences, um, why don't why am I why should I keep being alive, right? Do you, what's, the do point, you own, what's the point of doing kind of anything? Yeah, Steve, do you own a car? Yep. That car is going to end up in a junkyard rotting away someday, don't you agree? Yep. What's the point of owning that car then? Uh, it's utility. Yeah. Yeah. So the value yeah, in so life, it, it, the it, value it, in life is in living it right now. The fact that it ends doesn't make it valueless. The fact that it ends doesn't mean that all that time spent was wasted. Life is the only thing that we we have. You know, the the, the reward is in worth living it. It's not like I need a, a reward at the end of my, what's the, so it's like, it's almost like you're looking at life as if it's a race and if you don't get a medal at the end, why did you do it? Well, there are some people who just genuinely like to go for a run. Not me. Not me. <laughs> yeah, and so in that sort of idea, right, is that life ultimately has no purpose, right? Well, so Other than just to live life, right, that life, um, in and of itself doesn't really matter, right? That See, well, Steve, if you're, you you're, were to die today, it doesn't really matter. Of course it of matters. That you of, course, no, no, of course no, it matters. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm going to let you well, do how this. do you yeah. know that it matters? We're, we're so, going to answer you. you yeah, wanna, we're going to answer you if you stop. Yeah, so I've been, yeah. I've been trying to interrupt you and, and answer your question. So purpose and point are not intrinsic to what we experience or what we uh, assign to whatever it is we do. So the, the point of my life is whatever I assign it. The value of my life is whatever I assign it. And it's also what those around me, my friends, my family, uh, the people in the audience, the people listening, also assign to it. Um, theists, some theists may assign a very low value to my life and others may assign a very high value. But those are all things that we assign to it. So my point the point of my life is, is what I choose. The value of it is what I decide to assign to it. Um, and the effects of his life linger beyond his personal experience. Well, you know, every week somebody's going to call in to the atheist experience and ask a question that I've answered 10 times, 100 times, just a thousand times. So what's the point in coming in and answering the question? Or what was the point in answering it all those previous times? The thing is, it has an impact on the world that I live in, which I ultimately benefit from. And this will, in fact, outlast me. There, if, I, if I drop dead right now, there are people who will continue living who have benefited from something that I've said or done. Right. And, and so then me... I guess my question would be, why does it matter that anybody benefits? Right? Because it kind of it's you know mm -hmm. from an atheist kind what, of viewpoint. What do you mean? Kind of would, what do you mean yeah. by matter? Why does it matter? What you, you're, you keep saying? Why does it matter? Are, yeah, are you expecting it, it, it to matter, matter to whom? It, it matters to the people that I leave behind, and it matters to me now. And those are things that humans are assigning. They're not intrinsic to what we do. But let me turn this question back around on you, Steve. Sure. Why are you still alive? You're a Catholic. The best place for you to be in heaven. That, so why don't you go to confession, confess every sin you can think of and cover everything you can think of, walk out of confession and kill yourself? Why don't you do that? Well, I would be going to hell, right? Well, so <laughs> I, here, I would be here's... choosing against God, right? No, well, <laughs> no. Do you, do you know why the Catholic Church made that, came up with that idea? Because people were doing uh, it a lot. Why did they come up with that? The, uh, people in the, yeah, uh, in the medieval ages were, were doing it a lot. To provide some evidence. If you're going to hold people to a high degree of evidence, I think you need to provide me some evidence that people you go, are still go look, go look at the history of the church. So then, <laughs> go look at the history of the church. Go look <laughs> okay. at the history of the church. Yes, yes, yeah. That's, so the so the so Catholic you have a lower so, grade of standard that you apply no, to yourself rather than no. no. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm no. So <laughs> right. No, I'm hey, not. Hey, hey, listen, listen for a second, Steve. Um, this is a philosophical issue that was discussed many different times, and if somebody says. Jim's argument of why don't you do this and then kill yourself and there's no prohibition there's nothing that says in the Bible that you're going to go to hell if you kill yourself 
that's something that is within Catholicism, which was a response to these sorts of philosophical questions. You can not only not, you're, you're blowing it off as if we don't have evidence that this was invented for that particular reason, when the truth is you have no evidence that it is true at all. You're just using that as an excuse. Yeah. No, I would and, say and no. The evidence that I have seen is that it's been part of the entire history. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I, no, no, no. Stop, 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 stop. That's no. not what I was talking about. Even if you think you've seen evidence that this was always a part of Catholicism, you have no evidence that it is true that you are actually going to go to hell at all. You have no evidence there is a hell. You have no evidence that you're going there or why or how you are going there. None of that is evidence. This is all about doctrinal beliefs. Yeah. And, um, and I the, would the, say the, it's not about doctrinal beliefs. I would say that through our reason we can ascertain some level of the order of the universe, and then the rest we have is the revelation from God. No, 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 Demonstrate that there's been a revelation from God? Correct. Yes. Well, well, we would go and say, you know, we have Jesus Christ, right? So that's our revelation. No. From no, no. You have to but, demonstrate that he has. Hold on. Hold on. No, right? you we fucking hold on. Demonstrate that there is God, right? And so we need to go and apply our reason before we have faith, right? I think that's a pretty reasonable sort of thing to do. So we would have to go and think about, well, what's the makeup of the universe, right? Is being contingent on something, right? No. That's a classic way of doing it, which is, oh, you know, things exist in the universe because of other things. That so, Steve, no, no, Steve, no, 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 Steve, you're on hold. Yeah. This is the tap dance that people do when I ask them to prove there was a revelation from God. They try to pretend that, well, I can look at the universe and determine that this is contingent and this is not contingent. And therefore, I can get to the point where, ah, there must necessarily be a God. Then, then from there, we can reason to, oh, what can we know about this God and everything else? That's not what I asked. I could sit here and agree with you that there is in fact a God and still not have evidence that that God has ever revealed anything to anyone, or I could hold a view that some other religion's revelation is true and yours is not true. How do you resolve that problem and show whose revelation is true? Well, I can go and see what the revelation is. Yeah, right? if the re if revelation is that there's a hell, how do you demonstrate that? Well, I would say if the revelation is consistent with what we can, through our reason, come to understand about God and the order of creation, no, right? then we can go and ascertain which revelation would be true. Re it, reason alone isn't it, enough. You, yeah. have to, you have to have evidence. You have to have evidence. And I asked about a hell. Yeah. And so you, cannot, you cannot reason your way that hell without assuming something else that you cannot justify with evidence. Justified true belief. Yeah, is what and we're so like for. I could go and use the you know the witness accounts of Jesus Christ, right? I could go and use no, the witness can't. accounts of you, Christian. You can't. I can go and use a historical perspective on Steve, none of Steve, none Steve, of that Steve, proves Steve, hell. No, Steve, you can't. There, there are no eyewitness accounts. There are accounts of eyewitness accounts at best. There are no direct accounts. Uh, I wouldn't no, accounts. Yeah, you're absolutely you're absolutely wrong. The accounts are direct accounts. Wait, which right? account? The, wh which, which, are, which account? Which account? Which, the first century. which account is a direct account from an eyewitness? Uh, Matthew. Bullshit! No, you don't no. even know who wrote Matthew. You, oh come on! Who wrote Who wrote the book that has Matthew's name so, on? So here, here. Hang on. Who wrote the book that has Matthew's name on it? Uh, it was a scribe. Which scribe? Right. Oh, oh my God! You're done. Goodbye. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, saying goodbye to be yeah. polite. So, if I ask you who wrote something and you say the a scribe, what, I just ask you who wrote something. And you said the writer. Uh, and here's here's the worst part. As a former Catholic, the Catholic Church fully admits that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were not written by four guys named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It, right. It, they. It's not. Uh, you can go look at at uh, the papal bulls on that. They fully accept that. Um, there is no eyewitness account. It's part of Catholicism. Not only that, but even if it was an eyewitness account, you don't have the original. Right. And you have no way to investigate that eyewitness account to make sure that what you're reading is accurate by, by what they saw. Yeah. It's a multi-layered problem. And 
And the church, in the same way they've convinced you that, oh, we were all, all, it's always been doctrine from God that if you kill yourself, you go to hell. It has nothing to do with the fact that somebody presented a philosophical problem. Uh, the same way they convinced you that, you became convinced of the other things because you are enamored with your ability to reason about the universe and not sufficiently enamored of the notion of evidence. Right. It's justified true belief. Justified. I, 